Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review and today I'm going to be reviewing Before We Begin by Azzy Wind. And before we do, before we begin, please can you like and subscribe, check out cardmagiccourse.com, that's my online card magic course, go and have a look at it after this, just have a look at it, www. don't you have to do that anymore, do you? <laughs> Show me age. Uh, HTT, you don't have to do that either. Cardmagiccourse.com, have a look at that, it's got loads of stuff in it, over 500 videos, live sessions every week uploaded to the course and you get to see loads of cool stuff, there you go. Uh, but let's get on with this review. Oh and do they, a lot of people have said they miss the notifications of the live things or when I don't do the live things, so do click the little bell icon next to the subscribe, even if you're already subscribed, because um, yeah, people have said, oh I didn't know you were going live, so do that and do all other than customise and you'll get the notifications, right. So before we begin, uh, I've just finished this, literally just finished it, and um, I've been reading it all day, or about half of it, about two months ago, and then, or whenever it came out, um, and then forgot a load of it and just spent the whole day with it. And, and I'm not, I haven't gone insane, which is good, because some magic books you do that and you will go become unhinged by the end of the day. Uh, and uh, uh, it's a book about pre-show, right? And so for me, I wasn't drawn to it. And when I, I knew as he, I mean, I love repertoire. And when I knew as he was coming out of a new book, I was really excited. When I knew it was about pre-show, I kind of went, hmm, all right. So when it arrived, I wasn't as excited as I could have been. And, um, and it's a lovely book. It's a couple of issues with the font. <laughs> it doesn't look quite, it's, there's something about it that isn't quite gripping me design-wise, which is very unusual for Vanishing. Ink. But actually, it's grown on me and, uh, and that shouldn't make a difference. There's a saying about that, isn't there, I think. Um, but I, I started reading it, and straight away, okay, it's got this this example of a the show from hell, which uh, referenced later on in the interviews. There's a few interviews at the back, which we'll talk about in a bit. And it drew me in because I don't, I'm not interested in pre-show, and I never have been. Well, I'm not saying I'm not interested. I'm interested in it, but I'm not interested in doing it. And when I read this little bit at the beginning, which it, describes basically how not to do pre-show. I kind of imagined that was what pre-show was and that's the scenario that I imagined in my head if I did it. And, and actually what I've realised is I don't know that much about it, even though I might like to have thought I had. I don't know if that's the right English. Um, but you know what I mean. And that drew me in a little bit and I went, okay, straight away you're highlighting the issues. And after that, what he does is goes on to, I kind of lay out his story and say, this is what the, the argument of the book. And what the argument of the book is, yes, it is pre-show is great, but it's not everybody should do pre-show, which he also says near the end. It's about understanding what it is and understanding when the situation may be right to do it and not writing it off as I have. You know, there are things I'd do in my show which would have been easier with pre-show, which I'd have kind of gone, no, I don't want to just in case this. And it's because I don't know the subtleties. And when I say subtleties, that's a bit of a misnomer because it's not subtleties. Pre-show is one of those things I now know after reading this book that sometimes things feel like subtleties, but without them, there isn't, it's totally unconvincing or can be totally unconvincing. So this is one of those things, again, from reading where I see that if you don't do those subtleties, pre-show is that thing that we all fear and we don't like. It's, it's almost like Invisible Thread. And like he said, it's like any move. If you don't understand it and don't know the details in the in the out of it and when it's a good time to use it, when it's not a good time to use it, then you're kind of doing yourself a disservice, really. I'm not going to say too much of the content because I do think it's one of those things I think if you... Well, A, I don't want to because I want you to read the book if you're interested in it, but B, I don't want to give too much away here. Do you know what I mean? Pre-show is one of those things that I think it's a little bit like apps and stuff. You've got, you've got to be careful with what you give away. But he talks about um, the fact that it can cut out so much process and I think sometimes that can be so important if we just, if we reframe it in a different way and kind of go actually it's not just a great way to get information or a direct way to do it it's actually something that we can put a load of stuff around to kind of hide it but also it can eliminate loads of process the, the kind of boring bit now for some people that's not a problem I can watch people like John Archer obviously David Williamson um, no Britain I can watch them do I can watch them do process with no trick at the end of it just because they're so good to watch but with some of us and me included I think that it, that process can be very boring especially if you're a more serious performer so I think to get that bit out of the way um, is an important thing but for me it always felt like you know that weird thing of walking around the beginning of a show and kind of getting someone in, and it just looks so obvious to me that something's going on and of course the point of this book is 
it's written for me. It's written for people who have considered it, really, and gone, no. And it's also written for people who perform shows. So a lot of you will probably think, well, I don't do shows, I don't do theatres. And actually, Luke Germain says at the end, you know, he only does his pre-show when he does theatre shows. He doesn't do it, you know, he very rarely does it in corporate gigs and things like that. And, and it might, might make you think, oh, all right, it's not for me. But I would give it a chance because I, again, even if I wasn't going to do it, I've learned a lot. There's some learning between the lines of this, which is just about performance and mentalism, especially when it talks about scripting and the type of language you use and about how how I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but about how, you know, when you script, you, you, you still want it to be a conversation, but hit certain points that you know are really, really important. And that's going back to these subtleties I talked about. So he goes through a, a lot of the details after this opening kind of summary of what he's, what he's going to do, which is, you know, is selecting a target, little things you wouldn't think about when you're selecting someone that you're then going to later on bring into the show. And, and I thought straight away you're into the practicalities of it. Approaching a target, and that's the, the bit for me, is how do you go up to someone before a show and it not be really weird and really odd? And after that chapter, I was like, all oh, right, I really, really get this now. Justification, you know, the, again, a little bit like the approach, but the justification of doing it. And, and there are so many different things. And... The interviews at the end, incidentally, weren't just little add-ons. I thought they were going to be like an added bonus. But they inform the learning as well because you get Pendulat, Max Maven and Luke Germain, three people who are coming at it from a very different... Obviously, Max and Luke have similarities in their approach because they're mentalists, but they come at it from a different way and they, they provide different arguments. But it, also, they provide ways in which they would use it. Maybe not Pendulat so much, but Luke Germain and Max Maven... Um, and they use it in very different ways, which again informs this whole way of approach. So you've, you've not only got Aziz's ideas, you've got, you, you bring in ideas from different people like Joshua J and people like that as well, many more, and I apologise if I don't mention all of them. But this does kind of, at some point, feel like an ensemble piece. That he's, it's, it's, it's a book drawn from experience and also the experience of others, but definitely from experience of himself. He he, is, he says in the beginning that he's written this because he did it badly for so many years and there was so little on it that he wanted to kind of fill that gap and, and that is exactly what he's done. So basically the big chunk of the book is taking all those little things you would consider to be weird or odd or difficult or not or just have all the little aspects, all the, the categories I suppose of pre-show dispelling the myths or your worries and and the difference again between which he mentioned a few times in the interviews and in the opening the difference between stooging and pre-show and the fact that most people will shy away from pre-show because they see it as stooging and in fact it's, it's very much not and then at the end he has these free interviews and I, I, I will say i'm not going to go through what's in there but there is really practical stuff if you're a bit worried it's just going to be ideas and things like that and concepts it's really not it's practical ways and one of the, th the things I've, I'm so glad is in there, which what I think I would have struggled with if it wasn't, is scripts. Now, I know when we read scripts from other magicians, we don't really want to copy them word for word, as he said. But in this case, it's, they're really good to learn, I think, because it gives you different scripts for like a drawing duplication, uh, I think of a name script, a, a, and there's about four or five different scripts in there. But that's the real sort of nuts and bolts of it that I think that you will take away and go, I could say that, that would make that feel not weird. And really, really important. I'm really, really glad uh, he incorporated that. So at the end of the interviews, like I said, Max Maven, Penn Gillette, and Luke Jamey, really, really good to hear. And importantly, all of them saying why pre-show can be bad especially you know Max and um, Max if I know him uh, Ma Max Maven and Ben Gillette, uh you know I start by kind of saying they don't like it in most in, well in a lot of respects you know this is why it's bad this is why you wouldn't do it and we need that it's a kind of it's a balanced argument and and then to go on saying why it's really good and why you can use it and I think for a reader, that's very important because if you're like me, you get easily influenced. And if someone says something's brilliant, you just believe that. You need to hear the kind of flip side of the argument and the side of, of going, well, actually, no, it's, it's really not going to be good. If you use it too much, which is what is talked about in the book, it kind of gets blunted. It loses its, its sharpness. It doesn't really work. Or if you don't consider about, you know, surrounding it by cold reading or by something else, it just softens it and makes it, makes it less, uh, less obvious and the use of dual reality. And as Penn Gillette says, he, he says he doesn't really enjoy using it, but he, um, pre-show I mean, 
but he likes it. Do you know what I mean? And I really get that. And he loves dual reality, reading about it and knowing about it and thinking about it. And I think this can come into your performance. There are examples like when you're doing close up, if you overhear someone, you can then use that. And I have done that just on the fly before. But if you actually go into a close up situation and kind of go, actually, what if I really observe? Almost like Sherlock, you know, if you watch Sherlock, you go into a room and does it, if you, if you consciously observe and try and pick up those little things that you can then bring into your performance. So in that way, it doesn't necessarily have to come onto stage. It does in some of the ways he talks about, of course. But I think, again, there's a lot of learning here. Now, my, my brain's a bit kind of all over the place. That's why this review's going all over the place, because I've literally just finished it. I'm not, this is not scripted, and I've got a couple of notes here. Um, and and I've, as I've looked down there, I've seen that he, he talks about video and TV as well, which for a lot of people isn't going to be as, as relevant, and Zoom shows and things like that, but I think it's nice to have that in there. And at the end, he has this lovely um, example of when something happened that you'd think would be a disaster and it all came from came through for him and he's got a lovely picture actually at the end of the book which which is included which I'm really glad he did as well which I won't tell you anything more about um, but it really kind of summed up that thing of if you just take that risk or put the effort in how good it can be and yes there are risks involved and there's a whole chapter on those those risks which is called an ounce of prevention I wrote that down because I knew I wouldn't remember it which is saying okay these are the things that could and have and will sometimes go wrong and this is how we deal with them. And then after that, you kind of go, it's actually not as scary as we think it is. I do think to do this stuff, you have to really consider your performance. You have to consider the way you're communicating. And there's this, this thread that runs through this whole book, which is really about respect and rapport. The whole thing is about creating a rapport with your audience and respect to them and not just using them as a prop, not just getting them up and kind of almost using them as a stooge and getting a word out of them and, and doing something that seems ridiculously strong, even though, but there's, it's all the nuance around it. And actually he's got a, um, I just wanted to read this, this line here, if I can find it. Yeah, it's when he's talking to um, Max Maven. And he says, if you don't understand how delicate it is, meaning pre-show, and the nuances of what makes it work well, you're going to abuse it. And Max goes on to say, um, I agree completely. The only point I'll add to it is this. It's probably easier to misuse pre-show than most other tools because most people who try pre-show don't think about anything past what happens during the pre-show. In other words, what they concentrate on is how to get the information before the show. And that is exactly what this book is doing. It's saying that's only one part of it. And I really feel educated after this. Will I use pre-show? I don't know. But will I consider it? Absolutely. And will I approach my next gig, whatever I'm doing, in a slightly different way? Will I be observing, observing certain things and making note of certain things? And even if I have a meeting with the client beforehand, you know, all these things that can be used and you just realise that with these tools that he gives you, and not the tools as in the... The certain things you can buy to help it, which he does go through, and, to, to, and you don't need any of them. There are very simple ways of doing it. But the tools of, of the, the way I'll think kind of thing, the sort of thought tools, I don't know if that makes sense. Um, I feel like I'll go into it with a different thing and a kind of more excited, childlike uh, excitement of going, what can I find out now? What can I do with this? And I'll definitely consider it, and I think you should too, whatever, wherever you are in your magic. And I feel like a more knowledgeable magician after reading it. So it's a book that, isn't perfect because of that font. <laughs> I'm not going to be happy with that, but I don't know, something about it, uh, like I said. But it, 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 I couldn't really ask for more. It was a really good read. I've spent hours with it. I'm not bored. By the end of it, I was still enjoying the interviews. I love listening to magicians and anybody interview when they've got a constraint of a subject. It's like, this is what we're talking about. We're not just talking about magic. We're not just talking about your life. We're talking about this thing. And I found them really interesting. And actually, there were three of them. I wanted more of them, uh, which is a good, good thing to say. So there you go. Um, before we begin, by Azzy Wind, highly recommended, a really good read. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. So do comment below. Um, I will be answering those comments in the live shows on Thursday. Uh, so do please, I will read absolutely all of them and uh, answer as many as I can on the show. So uh, like and subscribe, check out cardmagiccourse.com. Use the links below if you want to buy it because it's very kind for people uh, vanishing for, to send me these things. 
uh, as do other people. And it's, it's really important that you click those links. They're not affiliate links, but it's just to say thanks.